All right, what's going on everyone? My name is Cameron, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be back on our uh, Towery custom menu uh, series that we've been doing. Um, we're going to resume uh, where we picked, or where we left off. Um, looking at, now that we have an actual menu, um, hooking into the custom menu items the uh, and the events that occur whenever you click them in order to emit something that the app can actually do something with. So uh, just to re just to uh, kind of walk through what we have currently, I've done a little bit of uh, I've done a little bit of work. You'll be able to see the code for this uh, on GitHub after uh, after this episode go and goes up. Um, but but I've done a little bit of work just on the UI just to kind of put a text area in. There's really nothing else other than that that I've done. Um, and the plan is to basically make it so that whenever I type in here and then I click new, uh, this will just clear. We won't have any. Uh, we won't have any content. Uh, and then whenever I click open, it will open up a dialog, and I'll be able to select a text file and read that in. And once I read that in, I'll display it here in the text area. So, uh, so yeah. So let's go ahead and we're going to uh, let, let's take a look. Let's recap and take a look at what we actually have already. Um, we set we told the Towery Builder that we want an app. Or I mean, a, a min, we have told the Towery Builder that we want a menu. And then we created this create menu function, which utilizes uh, which utilizes the menu builder in order to create the the app menu here uh, in our application uh, as well as the su the file submenu that you saw me working with before uh, and we in under that file submenu we added three options new open and save so now what we're going to do is we are actually going to come down and after the after adding the menu we want to say on menu event and from here this handler that we get will receive an event and then this event from this event we will go ahead and we want to we want to use pattern matching to look at the event dot menu ID so this this menu ID will correspond to these IDs. So in the last video, we talked about uh, we talked about these IDs serving a purpose, but we were only really concerned with the title at the time because that was what we were using uh, to display to the to the user what um, display to the user what uh, what these menu items were. But now we actually care about the IDs because that's how we're going to hook into uh, hook into the events. So let's go ahead and we're going to say new. We will perform some action here. Copilot giving me a little prompt. Uh, we're going to look at open and save. And then if it doesn't match anything, we'll give that a response or we'll give that just an empty an empty function, uh, an empty handler here. So let's go ahead and let's see how this performs. So I'm going to open up my terminal. As you can see here, we have uh, we have the logs from the app. Now, if I click new, you'll see. Okay, we do get that print line for new item clicked. I click open. I get open menu item clicked. So that's cool, but that's not exactly doing what we're setting out to do, right? Uh, in order for that to happen, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to communicate from the Rust side of our application to the actual client side, which will interact with the Towery API to, uh, to handle some of our more common utilities. Um, so in order to do that, let's go ahead and here in new, let's say event, dot uh, 
in order for us to do that, in order for us to do what we want to do, we need to emit an event to, uh, on the window on the window in uh, in Towery. And so, the event that we get from our handler here in this on menu event actually has access to the current window. So that's something that we need to we need to do. Uh, we need to hook into that, and then we need to say dot emit. And we are going to emit new, we're going to emit an event name of new content. And whenever you do this, you can actually, uh, you can emit a string or some sort of payload to, to, the, uh, to the client window. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this, but you could do that, right? You could, uh, you could send uh, some, some form of string. This could be a stringified JSON object. Uh, of, or something of that sort, uh, that is something that you could do. So from there, we need to uh, we need to unwrap, um, and you you might want to put an expect here or something. Uh, we're just for the sake of this video, we're going to unwrap. Uh, I'm then going to do this, uh, and we're going to change the the events that we emit and so now we have this being emitted so in order to actually understand how that works let's go ahead and go to our client side code so I have just a simple uh, I, I have just a simple view component here uh, it is the only view component that runs our application at, at this time. Um, as you can see, we have our text area. And then if you're not familiar with, uh, with view, I have a V model here, which is uh, orchestrating two-way data binding between the text area and this piece of state that I have here, this content which is just a, um, if you're used, if you're familiar with React, this is, this ref here is very similar to like use state, um, and we're just storing a, a piece of string state in it. Um, and so we're, or, like I said, it's orchestrating two way data binding so that whenever I type in this, in this text area, I'm updating that content. So now what we wanna do is, uh, I want to go ahead and I'm going to let let Copilot fill out a little bit of this for me. Um, just so what I want to do is, is I want to have some code run on mounted. So um, whenever this component uh, first gets mounted in the application, I want to run something. Um, and what I want to run is I'm going to import app window from at Towery apps. Thank you, Copilot, for giving me a suggestion here. Uh, I want to import that from at Towery apps API window. And as you can see, uh, Copilot is also giving me a suggestion here. I don't care about what is coming, uh, but we we need to use app window dot listen. And we are going to, in this case, listen for new content, right? And I want to set the value of this state to an empty string. I may need to do an NPM install. That, that shouldn't be happening. We'll see once, uh, yeah, so it, see it, it doesn't know how to resolve that. So give me just one second. Okay, so now that I've got that added, uh, just as a refresher, I needed to re-add Towery Apps API. So this is the import that you need uh, to be able to work with the app window. So now uh, I type into this text area, I click File, New, and boom, we actually have something happening. Um, just, just for the sake of showing that that works, I'm going to console log here. Uh, we're going and I'm going to say new content event in, uh, emitted. There we go. So now if I inspect 
I go to console, I'm going to clear this just for the sake of sanity, and click new, you'll see new content event emitted. So that's awesome. But just to show uh, kind of how, how, you would hand, how you could handle uh, multiple, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to handle the open event. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to say open file. And then what we need to do is we need to say import open from at towery apps API and just like just like we would want copilot helps us out there I'm actually going to one uh, give myself a try catch here if I can type uh, I will console the error uh, and the reason I'm doing that is this is a async operation. We're going to be not only working with we're not we're going to be working with the file system, and therefore we are going to uh, we're going to be working with the file system, and therefore we have the opportunity for things to fail. Uh, and so, uh, just for best practices, we're going to want to uh, to make sure we catch those and those and those errors. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to say uh, file path equals open. Uh, we're going to have to await open and then let's make sure is there anything that I need here yeah so what we'll do is we're going to set the title here we're gonna say select a text file and then let's go ahead and do filter we're going to uh, use copilot there and you can see I just added this uh, array this filters array uh, if you're if you're using TypeScript this should be a no-brainer really uh, really easy to follow along with the types but basically uh, the object takes a name for the specific file type and then uh, a extension so in this case I only want text files uh, from there uh, something to note is the response here is a promise obviously and then we get a string. So in this case, it would be uh, one file, uh, a string array, uh, because it is possible. I, I, I don't know, I would have to check the types. Uh, I don't know if multiple is set by default to true, uh, but this open will allow you to select multiple files and it'll return a string of arrays for the, uh, the paths to whatever you select. Um, I really think that that should probably be a dynamic something dynamic where you where you only return a string if multiple is set to true and a string array or I mean, it should return multiple if uh, it should return a string array if multiple is true a single string if it's not and then null obviously if you just close the window uh, then it's going to return null right because it's not going to have found anything so uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to account for if file path is null. So I'm just going to say not. If not, then we would normally handle this in a different way in our application. I'm just going to return for now so that we don't get an error. And then from there, I'm going to, we're going to have to read that file in. So in order to do that, let's, uh, let's come up, let's go import read text file from at towery apps file system. And so we're going to say uh, file content equals await read text file file path. And then this will also take uh, an empty object for for that. And so you'll notice here, this is throwing an error because the read text file expects a string, uh, but technically based on the types, this could be a string array or a string. Uh, in our case, I'm not, I don't have multiple set, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to say it is a standard string. Um, and then from there, the last thing that we need to do just as Copilot suggests, we are going to do content.value equals file content. 
So updating what should be in the text area with the content that we write in. So now let's go ahead, let's go open. You'll see that I have this test file already with some, with some text content in it. I'm going to open that up. And I have been running into this issue. And so let's click here and see. This does not work. Let me cancel that and restart. I think that this is actually a product of a, an HMR or hot module reloading bug. Um, so let me go ahead and click open. It emits. I'm going to select and open. And you'll notice, yeah, so that happens. So uh, like I said, I think that that's an issue with hot module reloading. I don't think that that would actually happen in a production Towery build. Um, if you are a contributor to Towery and I'm completely incorrect, feel free to leave that down below and say, I don't know what I'm talking about and <laughs> explain what that actually is and how I can fix it um, and let everybody else know because they may be, if they're following along with the tutorial, they're probably going to run into the same, the same issue. But that being said, uh, as you can see now, if I click new, it clears it. So uh, both of our events are happening exactly the way that we would expect them to. Um, and then I didn't, code anything in for this, but I just want to kind of showcase it. Um, in the app menu, we have this native element or this native item, and it is menu item quit. So if I come back and I say quit, that automatically just happens. That's already uh, something that Towery takes care of for you. So that's not something that you have to worry about. Um, so yeah. That's basically everything. We could go ahead and do this. We could do the save functionality, um, but it's gonna be the same concept. If this code starts getting too out of control, you'll, you might want to uh, have some sort of like function setup uh, uh, window, window listeners, and then take all of this, put this in here, and then this might end up being something that's extracted into like a, uh, a tower utility or something like that. Um, but that, for the for the most part, that is how that works. So um, yeah, doing the save file isn't going to uh, be, it's not going to go over anything new. So yeah, I think that that's about everything for the custom menu items. If there's something that I missed, feel free to drop that in the comments below, um, ask questions uh, that you have. Uh, and then uh, as always, if you found the video helpful, give it a like. If, you, if not, and there were issues, I will always take a dislike, but please leave that comment, those comments down below so that I can see how I can do better in the future. I appreciate him. I appreciate everyone watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.